Hello all. I am very tired, but I'm also very excited. If I manage to finish up this video, I will have completed five videos in five days, which I think is pretty cool. You can click here to see the other four videos I produced this week. Looking back on them, uh, they're actually all a bit depressing, uh, which I apologize for. I try to be a little more positive on this channel. I really do think things are getting better all the time. Unfortunately, I'm not changing pace with this one. This video isn't just depressing, it's actually a little angry. But that's what the topic requires, so we might as well get right to it. The United States government spends a lot of time trying to scare us. The terror fantasists have a lot of horror scenarios that they like to use, but their favorite is probably the idea that nuclear material will be used to explode a dirty bomb in a U.S. city. Today I'd like to point out how U.S. government policy has made this horror much more likely rather than less likely. If you are serious about nuclear non-proliferation, there is one relationship that is more important than all the other bilateral relationships in the world. This is the relationship between the United States and Russia, the former Soviet Union. In the early 1990s, Russia lost 40% of its land, 25% of its GDP, and its entire ideological reason for existing. Its state-owned economy, including much of its military, was sold off piece by piece. In 1986, the Russian nuclear stockpile reached a peak of 45,000 weapons. By 2010, that was down to 5,000 weapons. Nuclear material is actually pretty hard to make. All those leftover weapons components are pretty valuable. When the first dirty bomb explodes, it will almost certainly use components from old Russian weapons. In a rare success, Washington, D.C., under the Bush administration, realized the extent of this threat. They acted to counter it, partnering with Russia in making sure that these weapons were decommissioned safely and that all of the related waste was carefully stored. Washington, D.C. put a lot of time and a lot of money into trying to solve this problem. Back then, they recognized that if you cared about avoiding a dirty bomb, the relationship between Russia and the United States was the most important relationship in the world. Unfortunately, Washington, D.C. has spent the past 25 years pissing all over this relationship. They continued to fight the Cold War by expanding NATO, an organization that only exists to fight Russia. This policy was supported by both Democratic and Republican administrations. In 2014, this quarter century of work by NATO finally bore fruit, and now Russia is a rogue state in serious danger of complete collapse. With continuing sanctions and a plummeting oil price, Russians at all levels will start thinking a lot harder about those stored up nuclear materials and who might want to buy them. I hope all those presidents are proud that they made a few million Europeans a little bit safer from Russia by expanding NATO. The price may very well be an irradiated American or European city. There has been no apology for the destruction of the most important anti-WMT relationship in the world. In fact, I'm not even sure Washington DC has noticed. Keep that in mind the next time a Democrat or a Republican tries to tell you how he's made the country safer. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.